joined now by Bob from Joker's Gaming Cafe in Lehighton. Now, Bob, you have a gaming cafe, but you also do some ghost hunting and some paranormal investigating. Tell me a little bit about your background first before we get started. Well, I'm a, you know, professionally, I'm an educator. I have spent the last eight years as a, as a principal of a private school here in Lehighton. Um, currently working out of Pottsville, so I'm both in Carbon and Schuylkill County. Uh, master's degree in education from Kutztown, uh, Wilkes University, undergrad in Kutztown. So, um, you know, I'm very versed and, and I, I consider myself pretty educated. Um, enough to get into the area where I'm, you know, uh, one of my biggest pet peeves in the whole paranormal community is the, the, the you know, the scaring of the, of the people and walking away and saying, okay, bye, I'm done investigating and enjoy. And, you know, when I was, when I was running a group, we, we kind of took that to the extra level. Um, so basically what, what ended up happening was, uh, you know, the, the whole taps, the whole ghost hunters, the whole, all that stuff became very, very super popular. And we started seeing, you know, more mainstream because it got more mainstreamed. There were more people willing to share experiences with us, uh, just in individual people. Um, and I started to form a group of, of people together with like, like-mindedness and, uh, we we started with uh, four of us, and we ended up at the when we when the uh, the group ended up uh, disbanding, we were almost at about 22, 22 members. So we we investigated anywhere from, you know, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland. Uh, we did quite a, quite a bit in Ocean City, Maryland. Um, so we've done we've done ex, you know extensive uh, investigations, sometimes in two three hours, sometimes in two or three days. Um, then after that, uh, that group disbanded, I, I joined, uh, Ta uh, Pennsylvania Paranormal Association, uh, out of the Wilkes-Barre area. And, and they, um, uh, they filmed, uh, with the Haunted on, uh, on, on the, I guess the Animal, Animal Planet or Animal Network prior to Destination America now. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've, I've, I've gotten, I've seen my share of things. I taught a college class in paranormal investigation. So it was kind of a cool experience. Um, so I've I've been around. I've 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 interviewed enough people. I've talked to enough people. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't. It's not something I flaunt or put out there. But I, I've I've talked to many of the you know biggest investigators in, in the community through you know different things we've gone to as far as uh, expositions and things like that we've gone to together. Going from that, let's talk about what exactly a paranormal investigator does. Like. It's pretty much new to me, other than what I see on TV and what I know yeah. from Ghostbusters, the movie. I don't know <laughs> anything about it. So what we prided ourselves on when we, when we did this um, as a group is we would go in and do what we call a pre-investigation. Um, and I would look for red flags. I would look for things like, uh, you know, if they saw the, the Ghost Hunter seasons one, two, and three on their, on their, on their mantelpiece, as you know, what they're watching for this week. Okay, now that's a little bit of a red flag to me. You know, kind of, they want this place to have some kind of activity because, hey, I'm watching these shows. It's pretty cool. Um, we look for we looked for real life instances and why these things were occurring. Uh, I can remember one specifically we did um, in Schuylkill County, where we had a family bring us in because they were here. They were like in the living room and they were hearing banging noises. And they were feeling at their feet. It was pretty loud and pretty. It was it was pretty disruptive to their evening when they were watching TV. So um, we said, you know, I said, keep track of what time this kind of happens. And it kind of happened around the same time every day. So we started, okay, well, let's go do our pre-investigation during this time. And what ended up happening was one of their pipes downstairs right across the floorboards. And as the as the as the hot water heater got warm for their evening showers, it was expanding and because of the when the brackets was loose it was banging against the floor so we you just look for anything and any reason why you know it, it could be happening um but again you're looking for those red flags as well i mean there were when when it was at its peak when you know ghost hunters was on tv and then top top of the top of the you know the, the cable stuff and you know all these other shows started to pop up again people wanted this stuff to be happening so, so sometimes it's a ghost. Sometimes it's um, it's pl bad plumbing. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> sometimes it's just as simple as that. It's well, let, let me ask you this: uh, What have you experienced? What can you share with me? Like your 
scariest experience or the most real experience you had with the paranormal? Sure. So I'll share you a, a funny story with you, and I'll give you the 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 other the other story. So my funny, I actually have two two very funny stories. Um, they weren't paranormal at all. It turned out. Um, first one was we were at a place up in Edwardsville, which is up near Scranton, and uh, it was a small apartment. And these 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 guys, they 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 loved clocks for some reason. Clock they had clocks in every wall. So like as I'm there at two o'clock in the morning, all I hear is the clicking of the clocks. So I, I walk around and started taking the clocks down, and I'm like, okay, we're gonna put, the, we're gonna put this in this closet over here. And when I opened the closet up, something flew on my face. I fell on the ground. I screamed. I yelled. Turns out it was a Mylar balloon. Uh, <laughs> when, I, when I opened the door, the suction pulled the balloon at me, and it just flashed in front of me. So uh, that was when it put me on the floor. Um, the second one was we were doing an investigation out uh, in Bowmanstown down here in Early Heighton. And uh, I, we, we had to go outside because they were experiencing some things outside, seeing some things outside. So we were kind of walking along, and I, I kept hearing this noise next to me. And I, 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 every time I turn around with the camera, nothing was there. Nothing was there. It was dark. Um, and so finally, I heard it again, and I heard like a, a real strange noise. I turned around the camera and my flashlight this time, and there was a donkey, like right there in my face. <laughs> so it was that was we were right next to the donkey pen. I had no clue, but the donkey was like, "Hey, I'm going to investigate with you." So those are two times I really got got freaked out. Um, the two times I think that I, that I had the, 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 the most unique experiences was, um, when I was in high school and this is, you know, when this goes back all the way to us in third, fourth grade, second grade, you know, we would go to a library, everybody had library class, you know, everybody would go for Stuart Little or, you know, uh, Dr. Sue, whatever. I'd be over there at the paranormal books, the UFOs, the, yeah, me too. the ghosts and stuff like that. So, um, my interest goes way back to that, but I had a I had a girlfriend that I I was seeing back in high school, and she was giving um, she was giving tours at the St. Mark's Church in in Jim Thorpe, and uh, I I had gotten a day off of work, so I went up and paid for the paid for the tour, and you know I stood in the back and I made faces and picked my nose and flipped her a finger now and then just to just to keep her on her toes, uh, but after it was over, she she took me back through some places that they don't get to normally go on a tour. And there's a, a slight stairwell that, that leads down from St. Mark's Church out uh, near Broadway in, the, in uh, well, onto the road that connects to Broadway. So the Mansion House Hill um, coming down into Jim Thorpe. And as soon as we opened the door, it was significantly colder. Now, it was summer, so it was slate. So you figure out, okay, it's going to be a little cold, but it was, it was significantly colder. And... Uh, we turned around and, and uh, we went to go down the slate stairwell. And when we came around the corner, clear as day from belt, belt, belt up uh, was, was to, to this day, I'll say it was uh, Mary Packer Cummings. Just meandering down the stairs, looked back at us. Uh, we left. She quit. <laughs> and that's the end of that. That's the uh, but that was, that was a pretty significant experience. Uh, we never really even talked about it because we just like, it was just one of those things, like unspeak, unspoken, and after that, um, I had some experiences too. There was a, a, a some stuff that happened in a friend of mine house with, with, with poltergeist activity back when I was in like eighth, ninth grade. That was pretty significant, as well as well, because he got ended up getting hurt. A crutch flew off the wall, and he ended up getting a couple of stitches. So that was pretty significant. You had to explain that when you go to the hospital. Uh, what were you doing? Well, the ghost threw a crutch at me. You know, <laughs> how do you explain that? So, yeah, how do you explain that? <laughs> yeah. So, investigating wise, it's weird because you know it's one of those things where people run from stuff, and I run to stuff. <laughs> you know, so when something was going on, I was I was always the first one to drop the stuff and try to head over there to try to. Again, my biggest thing was always trying to be as professional as we could, because if we come in and we investigate a business, if we investigate a house. At the end of the day, I'm going home, you know. So it, if I'm going to come in and say your business is haunted or your home is is haunted, I or, or, or there's something there, I want to be absolutely sure of that. I don't want me leaving your house and then you're sitting there at twelve o'clock at night, you know, freaked out. What am I supposed to do? So we would kind of put ourselves there where we would we would do that pre investigation, get to know the client a little bit do the investigation, and we would always offer the client to be there with us um, so that they could see what we're doing was legit. 
And if we got recordings and things of that nature, you know, they they would experience the same thing. You know, if we're sitting in a room together, nothing's being said, and all of a sudden, where we got a recorder, we got we got a female voice talking to us. You know. Uh, now, have you have you heard a lot of this stuff? Have oh you yeah, recorded yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of this stuff. Yep, yeah, plenty of EVPs. Uh, EVP stands for electronic voice phenomena. Um, the research behind it is we can hear at certain decibel levels, you know, and, and you can do this with your dog. Right. Get a dog whistle, it's the same thing. Blow the dog whistle. We can't hear the dog whistle. The dogs can. So they hear and see at different frequencies as we do, as well as we hear and see in frequencies as other animals do. So the, 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 the thing behind EVPs is that when you record, it's recording at a higher or lower decibel than what you're able to hear. So if this, this entity or, or, or what energy or whatever it is is trying to connect with you, you might not hear it physically, but because it's, they're trying to speak at that lower, lower level than we're able to hear, the, mic, the, the microphone on the audio recorder will be able to pick that up. Um, very rarely do we get specific answers. You know, you see them on TV, you know, do you do, do this or when do you? But very rarely will we get specific answers to those questions. We found the most... Um, most we got was either something trying to talk over us when we were just casually having a conversation or when we would just set the, set the, set the uh, audio recorder out and then go about our business doing something else. Um, you know, we would, we would find a, a variety of things that way. Very rarely would they interact with us. But you have heard stuff. Uh, I mean, I have heard, oh yeah, I've, I've had places, gone places where you can physically hear it being mm -hmm. said. Um, one was, a, there's a, a small little one, one, one small little church in, in Palmerton. It's called the one, it's called the white, little white church. It's a historical site. And, uh, the, the Palmerton Historical Society had us go down and, 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 and investigate that. And, uh, one of our, one of our members of our group was very highly into, into religion, Christianity, and then kind of wavered with something that happened in his church. So he, he was not as, I wouldn't say I'd call him atheist, but he wasn't nearly as spiritual as what he was. And uh, he said something about going into the pulpit. And uh, we physically could hear uh, this, this entity say something about being blasphemous or, you know, that, that's not the right thing to do, that kind of thing. So we physically heard that. So it's kind of neat because you get the reaction. You get the reaction to the people that are in the in the video and in, in the thing. So, what's good nice about that is when you have a small area, you know where everybody is, what everybody's doing. We probably have more recordings than what we even knew we had. Um, I would often throw things out if I couldn't verify where an investigator was. Uh, you know, if somebody, you know, where was this person at? Well, they, I, we don't know where they were. They might have been at the bathroom. All right. Well, I can't, I can't have those footsteps because that might have been them. So. My group used to get mad at me all the time because I used to be the final, you know, review of all the evidence. And if I couldn't figure it out, if we, if we couldn't de say definitively that person was alone in the room, we, we would just throw it out. Yeah. So let's let's talk personal. What do you believe? What do you believe you're seeing when you're going into these places or hearing? Well, it's it's funny because this is the kind of thing that we kick around, you know, uh, as group members and. I mean, I, I can tell, I can share with you two theories that kind of really intrigue me. Okay. One's my own. And one is, uh, you know, when, when we die, um, the one thing this has taught me is that we're not worm food when we die. There's something else that happens. Okay. That makes me feel good. I don't know what it is. You know, we can argue all day, heaven, hell, purgatory. We can argue that stuff all day, but something happens. Um, so my theory kind of was, okay, when we die, our, our body is a vessel, the box. So when we, we die, that physical body, that box opens, all right? Out comes your soul or your spirit, okay? Your spirit kind of is the entities I think that we're picking up, the ghosts, the voices, the, the pictures, the, the strange stuff we see. Um, and then... Once we determine, once that spirit determines, hey, I, I'm not, I shouldn't be here anymore. I should be, I moved on. That next box opened up and then the soul is moved, whatever you, whatever you believe. In Buddha, Christ, whatever it is, whatever happens at that point, I think that's when that happens. Um, some of us 
you know, some some of the people who passed away know right away, hey, it's time for me to go. And others, it's something tragic that happens or something that's unexpected. And, and they're not really, they're going about in their normal daily routine, just like they normally would do. It's just, we can't see it or hear it. Um, another theory that, that I, I, it goes more along with physics uh, and string theory is that, you know, there are parallel universes. There are parallel uh, the best way it's described to me, and it really resonated with me, is like, think of a legal pad. You know, a legal pad has all those sheets of paper that are in it. And while it looks like they're touching, they're, they're really not. There's, a, there's space between those pages that are sitting in the legal pad. Uh, you can prove this because if you take a pen and put it in the middle of the legal pad, the pages, it, it, it kind of brushes up around it. So... The, the theory, the string theory on that is like when, when, when those universes, when there's a, a, an energy that pushes on that universe or that multi-universe, that they kind of intercede each other for just a second. And we're seeing that side just as they're probably seeing us for that second or they're hearing us or for that half a second, just like we're hearing and seeing them. So I think that that one, those two are my my you know one line I go to. There's other beliefs out there that you know these are people that that uh, you know were were forced in purgatory. Uh, purgatory for for them is is being alive. They didn't you know they they don't want to be here. They don't want to be on Earth. And all of a sudden you're stuck here. So th there's some different theories about that kick back and forth. Um, definitively, again. Obviously, it's not an exact science. It's there's a lot that goes into it. A lot that they have to prove to people because people are skeptical, and that's fine. That's good. I don't. I don't. I don't uh, fault people for being skeptical. I just my hope. My hope when I did this was that I was I was doing it professionally enough and truthfully enough that when I would present the evidence, that it would be seen as yeah, something legit is going on. Well, I'm I'm a skeptic. I I never really had any kind of paranormal experience with with spirits or ghosts or anything like that, um, mm -hmm. so I don't know where where I fall with that. I know some of the stuff I, I see on TV with these popular shows like um, uh, this, that Zach guy, uh, yeah, Zach yeah. Baggins. Sure. Uh, I look at how he edits his shows. I work in television. I know there's some. Yeah. TV magic thrown there, here and there, but there are some things I see on that show that really scare me. Like, mm -hmm. like I, and maybe they're they're edited like that just so well that there's jump scares. But I've seen some video of chairs moving, books falling off of shelves, dolls creep me out, uh, yeah. <laughs> clowns, um, and I've seen stuff where uh, people have purport, uh, purportedly being possessed. You know, I've seen mm -hmm. exorcisms videos of that that kind of creeps me out that makes me more of a believer because mm -hmm. again uh since you know i am a catholic uh then the catholic church does say yep. exorcisms are real that. uh just researching ideas for this halloween show seeing like like exorcism videos i don't know what's going on there you know or seeing things move on on video that like okay yeah it could be planned it could be fake videography but i don't know man uh it's a great big wide strange world out there i, I can't discount it 100 percent. it is and i've always been a touch it feel it smell it type of guy if i can't do those things then it, it didn't happen you know it didn't it didn't happen so that, that's kind of how i went into this with with that kind of in mind mm -hmm. um you know i'm always skeptical of those shows too only because i've been to so many places you know, and I've probably investigated thousands of hours, you know, of, of investment into this, whether it's at the physical location, pre-investigation, post-investigation, or even reviewing the evidence that goes along with it. You know, I would say probably of those thousands and thousands of hours and photographs and videos and, and audio recording, 2%, you know. And, but hey, 2% is still... Right. Two percent. My, 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 my point is, look <laughs> at these places they go to, and they have our show of you know. I just I have a hard time buying that they're having that much activity happening. Yeah. That certainly can happen. There's not um, there's not that much activity going on in the world. There is. You're saying there is, but it's not as uh, predominant as a lot of. 
people are saying, right. I could buy that's, it. That's, that's what I think. I think it's got to be able to right, right place, right time. Um, we were we were a big proponent. Like again, we were big proponents of talking with the person and trying to get the person to pinpoint when the activity is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, because that would give us a time frame to know when we would be able to come into that area and, and see that hopefully have that same thing happen. So many of these places, many of these people would have start journals or logging, you know, for a month uh, if they see something or hear something, you know, so that we would have the ability to say, okay, we need to go to this place between one and five. Uh, AM. This is when they're experiencing whatever. Um, you know, some of that is thought of that as like residual energy, where you know you have the same. The, again, if the, if you believe in the, the fact that the person is going on their life, they're going on doing what they normally do every single day. So, I mean, we had a place in Palmerton, Pennsylvania, where um, this, they built an addition onto the house, and just the angle the guy. I mean, and, and these were good people. These were these were. He was a he was a, a a doctor. She was a she was a lawyer. I mean, we're talking you know high quality people. She would go back and he would. They build an addition on the house. And he would, just the way they positioned the couch in this new new place, he would be able to lean back at night watching TV and see clear across to the other side of the building. And every night about the same time, he started to see a shadow figure, uh, kind of come in, move across. That's it. So that's what they had us come in there for. And lo and behold, because he was able to document, we were able to not only get the figure walking through at about the same time, uh, we also set up some equipment and the equipment did trigger when this this, this shadow kind of moved through. And um, we could have a whole other show on, on psychics and mediums, but you know, I, had a, I, had, I had somebody that I trusted a whole lot uh, doing this. and. Before we even presented that to her, she said that the person that was coming in that house worked at the zinc company and they were coming home from work every day at the same time. And they were literally dropping their stuff outside and going up and getting a shower. And right where that shadow went was right through the, the, the old living room, right to the stair steps, up the steps to the shower. So hmm. it's pretty interesting how it tied together. Yeah. Well, so I guess, you know, sometimes... The answer isn't automatically ghosts or poltergeists or demons. Sometimes right. there's a rational explanation. Most of the time, there's a rational explanation. Well, it's nice that, you, that there's people that will come and come to your house and, and do that for you. And, and, you know, because, hey, look, if I had a ghost in my house, I would want either to someone to tell me, yes, that you're a ghost in your house or no, it's something, you know, like you like said before, uh, bad plumbing. Um, <laughs> if there's a ghost in my house. I want it gone. I can't live like that. Sure. <laughs> and that's, and I think that's where a lot of the groups drop the ball. You know, they, they will come in and say, here's all the evidence we collected. Here's what we think it is. And goodbye. See ya. And there's no conclusion to that. Well, let's um, say, let's say if there is a ghost in a house, let's say you guys go in and you're like, okay, there's something going on here. There's a spirit. There's an energy here. What do you do next? What's the next step? We would leave it to the homeowner to decide what to do. Um, but if, if they wanted to, in most cases they would, we would bring our medium in and she would do what they call a clearing or a cleansing. And I'll tell you what, we got one, one of my best audio clips is of that same house, of, of, of that same area, same prominent area where we had a situation where they wanted to, this girl, this, this little girl is what we determined it to be a little boy, a little girl, wanted them to be, wanted them to be, to be safe with the mom. So, you know, she's there. She's there with one of the investigators. And she says, you know, I'm opening up the door. You know, I want you to find somebody that you know, reach out and go to them. And, I mean, Jeff, she says this. And the next thing he says is, he hears, Mommy. So I think legit we were able to clear out that house. I mean, to get that, to get that entity to cross over to the other side. I mean, the biggest thing is, that, like I said, there's something, something. I've been doing this long. I did this long enough to know that there is something out there you know if you are experiencing something in your home you're not crazy i mean i we must i mean if i had a nickel for every time i heard that you know i think i'm crazy i think i'm crazy i think i'm crazy if you think it's happening reach out try to find a group out there there's plenty of places to look on the internet to find a group in your area have them come out have them do an investigation see what's going on you know um i would say probably 99 percent of the cases i did it wasn't harmful. It wasn't hurtful. It wasn't there to do anything. It's just, this is there. Uh, it just needed to be moved over to the other side, or, 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 it was just a residual imprint on history. And then, how that works, I don't, I don't know. But 
Um, you know, reach out to them, but then make sure, make sure if they if they're able to come in and say, you know, hey, this is going on in your house, we're going to charge you fifty five hundred dollars to get rid of this entity for you. That's a red flag. Um, and I've 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 experienced groups like that where they'll come in and they'll just say, oh, all this evidence points to this. You know, we, we want to get rid of it. We're going to charge you. Everything that we did from beginning to end, pre-investigation, investigation, post-investigation, post clearings, cleansing, absolutely free. We never took a dime. Um, we had some some people that did, you know, um, give us donations and we used that to buy some equipment. But make sure that whoever you're working with has the opportunity and the, and the means to, to help you post. Because once you know those things in your house, what are you going to do with it? 